It's frozen. What's that? Good evening, everyone. President Christodoulides, uh, Madam Speaker of the Parliament, Ministers, Excellencies, and so many dear friends who I see here this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Today really is a commemoration and a celebration of both American independence, but it is a celebration of the values that bind us together. We are thrilled to be back at the University of Cyprus to celebrate our Independence Day again this year. And I want to say thank you to Rector Christofides for making us feel so very welcome here. Allow me also, please, uh, to thank our sponsors, the American and American-affiliated companies here tonight who are generously supporting this event. This evening is not possible without them. Their presence in Cyprus, whether they've been here for decades or only a few years, is visible evidence that these companies, very much like us, believe in Cyprus's potential. And I greatly appreciate the contributions American businesses make to increasing the commercial and economic ties between our nations. And I want to offer my assurances of the embassy's tireless efforts to promote growth and prosperity for all of our citizens. So in anticipation of the Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games in France this year, and personally, as a dedicated sports fan myself, uh, it is a pleasure to host a celebration focused on the unity and joy that sports afford us all. Sports teach us so many life lessons, like the rewards for perseverance, as we saw when Pavlos Kantidis won the first Olympic medal for Cyprus in 2012. And sports bring people of all ages and all backgrounds together in ways that foster teamwork, a sense of discipline and competitiveness that lasts a lifetime. So Americans and Cypriots share a profound love for sports that strengthens our bonds of friendship. It is among the many common values that we share, respect and commitment to democracy, to the rule of law, and opposition to aggression and revisionism. It's these values that bring us together to confront challenges and celebrate shared achievements. This past year, it's that sense of teamwork that formed the cornerstone of the successful partnership we enjoy today between the United States of America and the Republic of Cyprus. Mr. President, we have achieved so very much together, and I am grateful for your partnership in bringing our nations closer. Just two weeks ago, in the latest step forward, Secretary of State Blinken and Foreign Minister Kambos launched in Washington a strategic dialogue between our countries, and we are looking forward to the first meeting being held here in Cyprus this fall. The strategic dialogue is a tool for growing our relations across a broad range of interests, including trade, science and technology, security, education, and people-to-people -people ties. It is yet another reflection that Cyprus is a deeply valued partner for my country. This past year, the Republic of Cyprus has played a critical, stabilizing role in a turbulent region. It has provided a crucial platform for political, economic, humanitarian, and military reach at Europe's intersection with the Middle East. And after Hamas's brutal October 7th attacks, which brought the region to a boiling point, you, Mr. President, offered up Cypriot waters, Cypriot ports, and Cypriot resources to support planning for the potential evacuation of civilians, including Americans, in the region in the event of escalation. And as the humanitarian situation worsened, with land crossings closed, and the search for alternative means to get food and medicine to two million Palestinians became urgent, you, Mr. President, offered a solution. Cyprus's humanitarian maritime corridor, a collaborative international effort in which life-saving donations from international partners are screened in Cyprus, has so far dispatched more than 8,800 metric tons of urgently needed aid to Gaza. So yet again, we see Cyprus has positioned itself as part of the solution, stepping up to assist its neighbors and promote regional stability. Legendary American athlete Carl Lewis said, 
the trials on the road to world harmony are no greater than the courage of those who accept the challenge. Let there be no doubt that the Republic of Cyprus has accepted that challenge, and we are proud to stand together in these efforts. Just as we have every day since October 7, the United States continues to be deeply committed to securing the release of Israelis taken hostage in Gaza. We are working with our partners in this region to realize a deal that would result in the release of hostages and the establishment of a ceasefire. Such a deal would allow for the surge of humanitarian aid to bring immediate relief to so many suffering in Gaza, to ensure the protection of civilians, and to create the conditions to build an enduring peace that can bring lasting security for Israelis, for Palestinians, and the region. The United States stands as a committed partner as Cyprus looks to grow and expand its economic base and continues its efforts to strengthen the integrity of its banking system. These efforts, a powerful demonstration of Cyprus's decisive alignment with the transatlantic consensus, uh, diminish the Kremlin's ability to finance and fuel its unjust and brutal war in Ukraine. And at your request, Mr. President, Federal Bureau of Investigation and Department of Justice officials are collaborating with their Cypriot counterparts to enhance the capacity to identify and prosecute money laundering, sanctions evasion, and financial crimes. The closer cooperation of the American and Cypriot justice systems it is a welcome development, and we look forward to the progress this collaboration will yield. I am incredibly proud of the work our teams are doing together to make it easier for Cypriots and Americans to travel between our countries, and I am grateful for the progress that we have made. And in the process of working through these elements, we are enhancing the security of both of our nations. And, Mr. President, I want to assure you that Cypriots can count on the United States of America to remain committed to a just and lasting peace on the island and engaged in bridging the divide between Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot communities. The appointment of the UN Secretary General's personal envoy during this 50th year of the island's division presents a key opportunity. When Cypriots look back, many years from now, at 2024, it's very much my hope that they will look back with satisfaction and with pride at the start of a dialogue and a process to ensure peace, stability, and opportunities, not just for themselves, but for their children and for their grandchildren. We very much support the UN Personal Envoy's efforts because we believe and we know a just and lasting solution based on the agreed Security Council framework will benefit all Cypriots. And just as it is an election year, uh, sorry, an Olympic year, it is also an election year. I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. It is an election year in the United States, in case anyone hadn't quite focused on that yet. The democratic process is one that is messy. It is one that is often complicated. But it is a testament to our values and to our resilience. And let's not be confused by the messaging of our adversaries. Elections are not a moment of weakness. These are the moments when democratic nations find our greatest strength, when our people speak out, speak up, and are counted. And it is very much our job to listen. So the remarkable black American athlete, Jesse Owens, from the 1936 Olympics in Hitler's Berlin, once told a watching world, find the good, it's all around you. Tonight, we celebrate the values of freedom and democracy with our dear Cypriot friends. We celebrate the good that binds Cypriots and Americans together. So before I turn this over to you, Mr. President, and I promise I am, um, I want to say a word of thanks to the embassy team who, uh, and the volunteers who have worked so hard to make this event possible. I would also like to take one moment, if I may indulge uh, myself, to recognize my incredible Deputy Chief of Mission, Yorena Ferencevich, um, as she prepares to depart post. She has been an invaluable partner to me. Uh, she has been a colleague. She has been my friend. 
And it's not that she has just been these things for me. I know so many of you feel the same way as well. So thank you for helping me recognize her service tonight. Thank you, Your Honor. So we are so very lucky to have uh, the uh, ensemble Free Groove from the United States Army, Europe, and Africa Band and Chorus with us tonight to help us celebrate. So thank you again for joining us. And Mr. President, thank you. Your Excellency Ambassador Fisher, dear Julie, Madam Speaker, esteemed guests, dear friends, I'm distinctly honored to be part of celebrating the 248th anniversary of the independence of the United States of America. I cannot speak for the Americans in the crowd, but I can ask for the Cypriots and the rest of us here tonight, what is exactly we're celebrating beyond the birth of an independent sovereign nation? As many of you know, I have ties in the United States. I studied and I live there. I have family there, but my story is not exceptional, quite the opposite. America has always been a country of aspirants, of those who dream. You are tired, you are poor, you are huddled masses yearning to breathe free, as a Statue of Liberty in New York remind us or in New Jersey, I know that there is a... I, like so many others before and after me, yearn to breathe and to think freely. Through America's exceptionalism, that gift is bestowed to those who seek it. 248 years ago, America renounced monarchy and class, static bloodlines for upward mobility. Has it been a perfect success? Of course not, but it is an awesome experiment, one which still, I believe, captures the imagination of the entire world. For 248 years, we celebrate that there is still nothing quite like it. The United States of America, the land of opportunity. Had I stayed in America after my studies, which feels like it was about 248 years ago by now, I could be a proud Cypriot American. It doesn't really work the other way. If you go from Cyprus and live in America for 20 years, you become a Cypriot American. If you come from the States and live in any other country for 20, for 30 years, even more, you will always be an American expat. <laughs> America, up sports and, and become stronger for it. Maybe this is the project towards which we in Europe are still building and why America cannot stop fascinating and begging us to join her inclusive identity which has withstood two and a half centuries and counting. Today, we celebrate all that the 4th of July symbolize for the United States, for the world, its universality. It is also a pertinent moment of celebration of the ever-expanding friendship between the United States and Cyprus. Never has our partnership been stronger. Never has a bond between our countries and our peoples been more true and valuable. As a historian by training, I retrospectively trace and assess as a politician, my solemn task is to place building blocks for the future, for the generations to come. And so since the independence of Cyprus, of the Republic of Cyprus in 1960, it is fair to say that our bilateral relations have witnessed tectonic changes. They have transformed entirely. And this remarkable transformation has had a profound impact well beyond the boundaries of the two countries and our bilateral relations, but also in the region of the Eastern Mediterranean and the greater Middle East. The foundations of our partnership are solid and they are value-based. Democracy, rule of law, human rights, respect for sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity. 
there have been distinct milestones in the trajectory of our relations. In 2018, as a foreign minister, I signed the statement of intent which both signaled and sealed the elevation of our relations to a level they have never reached before. The 2018 statement of intent has served as our springboard for the continuously ever growing partnership. In 2019, the significant Eastern Mediterranean Security and Energy Partnership Act followed. And in the same year, we inaugurated the participation of the United States in the trilateral cooperation between Cyprus, Israel, and Greece. In January 2021, together with the then acting United States Secretary of Homeland Security, I had the privilege to hold the groundbreaking ceremony of Cyclops, the Cyprus Center for Land, Open Seas, and Port Security. This was a point of culmination in our security cooperation, serving not just our two countries, but also this vital region of the world, the Eastern Mediterranean. Its inauguration symbolized the expanding cooperation between Cyprus and the United States, from security to regional cooperation, trade and investment, and last but not least, people-to-people -people contacts. Cyclops is essentially an integral part of our common vision for a peaceful and prosperous greater Middle East. This common vision, dear friends, has translated into tangible action that is saving civilian lives. Our partnership, Cyprus and the United States, together with the European Union and other partners in the region, have delivered the Cyprus Maritime Corridor, the Amalthe Initiative for the Delivery of Humanitarian Assistance to Gaza. And I wish to reiterate our deep appreciation to all U US administration agencies for working together with the Cypriot authorities and all other key partners involved in this collective humanitarian effort to deliver desperately needed humanitarian aid to the civilians in Gaza. In the past, we have also worked together as Cyprus became an evacuation center for Americans and Europeans at times of stability and war in our neighborhood. Cyprus has historically been a safe haven in the region and with America, a regional humanitarian hub. Cyprus, the European Union's lighthouse in the Eastern Mediterranean, will decisively continue to be part of the solutions to the problems of the region. A force for peace and stability, a humanitarian facilitator, a country that assumes its moral responsibilities and aspires to a brighter future for our region and for all of our neighbors. Dear friends, the deepening of our bilateral relations across the whole spectrum of our cooperation has continued to be a priority since day one of my mandate as president. Together with the truly outstanding United States Ambassador to Cyprus, my dear friend Julie Fisher, whose contribution to the US-Cyprus relations cannot be overstated, we have set a roadmap for decisively further bolstering our relations and step by step, we are delivering. 2024 marks a historic milestone for our bilateral cooperation and only paves the way for more milestones in 2025. On June 17, 2024, in Washington, D.C., Foreign Minister Combos and U.S. Secretary of State Blinken launched the structured strategic dialogue between Cyprus and the United States the establishment of the strategic dialogue is a highly significant development that epitomizes the joint commitment of this partnership, the alignment of the interests of our two countries in securing stability and security in the Eastern Mediterranean, an alignment which is solidly based on an unshakable value-based common denominator, our shared norms and values in democracy and the rule of law. Looking ahead, Cyprus and the United States have so much to look forward to. 
significant developments in the further deepening of our ever-growing partnership are underway through continued cooperation, including in the areas of economy and investment, security and defense, rule of law, innovation, science, technology, research, and expanded cultural and educational exchanges. On security and defense cooperation, I cannot stress enough the importance of the U.S. full lifting of the arms embargo on Cyprus, as well as to emphasize the need to continue working so that the arms prohibitions become permanent. As Julian and I often discuss, it is vital that the unprecedented collaboration between our governments has a tangible effect on people-to-people -people ties, enhancing trade and investment, education, and people-to-people -people contacts is top of our list, and we're focusing and working hard on delivering also in this all important field. Dear friends, underpinning the growing partnership between Cyprus and the United States is a strategic commitment to stability and peace. In standing by Cyprus as we exert all efforts for the reunification of our country, the United States stands for international legality. It stands for peace and ending 50 years of division and occupation. Reunifying my country and its people, ensuring that Cyprus remains a force of stability in a turbulent region, is and will remain my main priority as President of the Republic. In this regard, I'm working closely and intensively with the UN Secretary General Envoy, Ms. Olkin, and we consistently and continuously make every possible effort to resume the talks from the point where they have been interrupted in line with the only possible basis, the one outlined in the UN Security Council resolutions that call for a bizonal, bi communal federation with political equality as defined by the relevant Security Council resolutions. Dear friends, dear Julie, as we come together to celebrate the universal message and symbolisms of July 4, we have so much to be proud proud of in what we have jointly achieved in Cyprus-US relations. More so because we have had achievements in the face of adversity for both our region and the world. Cyprus has proven to be a credible and reliable partner, one with a strong moral compass. This is a path we will continue to work as trusted partners delivering for our countries and our citizens. Thank you, Ambassador Fisher, dear Julie, for your warm hospitality on this beautiful evening of togetherness. With these words, dear friends, please, no wine? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, happy Independence Day. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Cheers. This is American wine. Yeah, it's American wine. <laughs> yes, of course.